University of Oregon is a relatively small animal care and use program when compared to many other institutions, although we are renowned for the zebrafish work. Uh, it was really the result of George Streisinger, who was a developmental biologist at the University of Oregon, who had worked with bacteriophage and wanted a challenge with a vertebrate model. And so you know, he started working with zebrafish in the in the 70s and, and uh, made the front page of Nature magazine, uh, cloning the first vertebrate animal. And so, uh, you know, so so we're really well known for our zebrafish work and, and we've been doing it since that period of time and have been uh, spawning postdocs uh, all over the country and, and the world. And so it's, it's really a privilege to be working with these uh, uh, investigators. Uh, George is no longer living, but others like Judith Eisen and Monty Westerfield and Chuck Kimmel, and these are just, uh, you know, stalwarts and icons in the, in the zebrafish world. And, and so I just, I see it as just a real privilege just to be associated with, uh, the, with the research that they do. And so it's really almost been by osmosis, uh, that I've uh, I've learned what I have learned about uh, using zebrafish and and uh, its upcoming uh, prominence as an animal model and uh, and I think that's still you know that's still going to be true in terms of it, the almost exponential rise on the amount of uh, research publications associated with zebrafish and the number of different models and uses for for zebrafish and there's a number of reasons for that but. I won't necessarily uh, go into that. So, How many zebrafish at University of Oregon? Uh, we have approximately, at any given day, about 150,000 adults. Uh, you know, juven- juveniles, uh, you know, probably anywhere from 20 to 30,000. Um, most of the work that's done at the University of Oregon involving zebrafish is with embryos. And so uh, zebrafish embryo is usually about a three-day period, uh, given what temperature they're raised at and and uh, whether or not it's a uh, mutant strain or not. But that's typical. The length of period before they actually hatch out of their chorion is about 72 hours. And so uh, we certainly don't require our investigators to count embryos. If I ever ask them to do that, I would be out on the street in a minute, I'm sure. Nor that I think that that is reasonable. I mean, there are there are rules and regulations, and then there are rules and regulations. And so, uh, but what we do do is ask them to estimate uh, the amount of, of, of embryos that they might need for their various research projects. And so, to give you some idea of the scale, uh, we probably estimate that we use 10 to 15 million zebrafish embryos a year which is which is you know it's a lot however it's still an embryo and they don't have any sensory mechanisms that are sufficiently developed to sense pain distress or discomfort Uh, so we actually look at that as uh, part of the three r's where we're replacing a higher vertebrate animal with a lower vertebrate i.e. a zebrafish, and replacing a higher developmental stage, adult or juvenile, with a lower developmental stage, an embryo or a larva. So we act- I actually think that that's a, uh, that's a good thing, uh, and it's a, uh, you know, something we should be communicating more with the general public, although the numbers seem quite daunting, uh, and yet there's good reason for those numbers. 